Culture really is one of my most favorite topics, and it seems like picking up like crazy in terms of people wanting to understand it more. One of the things that I do as an organizational psychologist, it's a little different from a clinical psychologist, a lot different actually, but my focus is really much more on systems than individual people. Obviously, individual people make up systems, but I'm really focused at kind of more of the macro level and looking at how systems and processes work together. Because I'm a consultant, I go to lots of different companies every day. In fact, I could be in five different companies in any one day. And I always go through to the receptionist, right? And I see kind of what I experience can vary a lot. And in many examples, I see sometimes kind of crazy things. So the example that I want to bring up with you is one that was real, and this is trying to depict it, is going into an office and I see all kinds of crazy, like kind of frenetic energy. You know, people, there's like a buzz and something's happening and people are all kind of scurrying around and then running over to this other cube and scurrying around and wow, something's happening here, right? Do you think that, what I just described, is that culture? I would call that climate. That's how it feels, right? So what I just saw, what I just felt was a feeling of, ooh, it's frenetic. What culture is, is why. Why are they acting that way? You have to go deeper and go under a couple layers to try to figure that out. It could be that actually something really good just happened. Some big new um, product got launched and everybody's really excited about it. Or some feedback came in and everybody wants to talk about it. Or it could be all the way over here on this other end of the continuum where something bad happened, something failed, something software went down. Uh, we got a huge customer complaint. So what's presented at the surface is not culture. What culture is, is why people do what they do. Does that make sense? And that's why culture's so damn hard. Because it's under there. It's not what you see. And you really have to dig deep to figure that out. Um, some things to think about is that really it's the backdrop. Culture is the backdrop for every single thing that happens in the organization. And in fact, there's some, some support and some research to say that organizational success is completely dependent on your culture. That whether or not you're going to succeed as a company is really based on whether or not your culture is aligned to your strategy. So we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. So one of the things that I think is really hard about culture is that there's so many different ways you could define it. So what we have up here is just some examples of some different cultural attributes. So think about your organization as we talk through this. So to what degree is your organization top-down decision-making versus kind of more participative decision-making? How much is your organization rigid versus kind of relaxed? What about caring versus cold? What about something like, um, one of my favorites is hierarchical versus flat? One of the things that amazes me is when I see employees get in the elevator with the CEO, what happens when, the, when that goes down? Do they talk to them? Do they look down? <laughs> Do they huddle in a corner? What happens? Is, there, is the hierarchy so great that there's a, a true fear there? So hierarchical versus flat is another one. Secretive versus honest. This is one that's pretty fascinating in many organizations, is trying to understand the degree to which we're honest. And most of the time, it's related to the next one, the relationship saving versus truth telling. I see this in a lot of family-run businesses or businesses that want to be family. They talk a lot about, we're a family here. And what often happens in those cultures is that it's more about us preserving the relationship we have versus telling each other, giving honest feedback, telling each other the truth. And then indifferent versus curious. Do we ask questions? Or do we just like, oh, here we go, another day, who cares? Let's not even go there, right? So it's really um, kind of interesting to think about these kinds of attributes as culture attributes. There are, an, I don't want to say infinite, but a large number of possible cultural attributes in your organization, in anybody's organization, that might describe your culture. One of the things, one little interesting thing here is, we talk about, I'm talking about culture, I'm talking about your organization's culture. 
because it's any sort of group that can have a culture, there's also some different interesting really levels of that. You could think about how does the geography of some of your different locations, how does that affect your culture, right? So we could imagine that there might be a national or geographical culture that could come into play in your organization. You can also think, this one's fascinating to me, is professions have cultures. So salespeople have certain kinds of cultures and certain kinds of ways of thinking about things. They tend to be much more optimistic, which makes a lot of sense, right? They, really across the board, anytime I do an employee engagement survey, the sales results are higher than everybody else's. Guess who's at the bottom? What profession is at the bottom? Engineers. Engineers are always the lowest scoring, less positive, because they're critical and analytical and nitpicky about things, right? They see kind of the problems, they see the bugs. So there are those professions kind of bring a set, a way of thinking about the world that absolutely can affect your organization's culture. So there's so many different facets of this to try to understand, and this I think makes it really interesting and fun. Thank <laughs> you.